I'm so excited today because I have the unique opportunity to show you bilateral conjunctivitis both clinically and under the microscope. So let's start with the clinical picture. One side and the other side. This is the clinical picture of conjunctivitis that I got from my kids who brought it from daycare. And yesterday I only had this eye affected and I thought, huh, okay, it itches, it has this discharge, but let's make lemonade out of those lemons and let's make a video. And I didn't do this video. I was so annoyed with myself because I had this discharge coming out for this eye and I thought, oh, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna show it to you under the microscope. And when I woke up in the morning, the discharge was gone. So I said to myself, okay, I procrastinated, opportunity missed, lesson learned, never procrastinate again. And guess what? Universe gave me another chance to deliver this video to you because now the discharge is in this very eye. Oh, you can see it right here. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a glass slide or two I'm well prepared and we have this little q-tip take it from the edge of my eye and put it on the slide so let's see if I can just do it here okay I've got it I feel like like some kind of vampire guys really we have it right here at the tip of the Q-tip and let's put it on the slide. Come on, I need the help of the other Q-tip. Let's place it. Let me take the other glass and, and let's make a nice smear. Okay, let's check if we can get another sample here with the use of the mirror. Where's our glass slide? I have the slide. Oh, wow. oh it's beautiful. Okay. And yes, I wear full makeup. Is this the smartest thing with bilateral conjunctivitis? Probably not. And sticking a Q-tip into your eye isn't the smartest thing either, but I already tried on the other eye yesterday and I was fine. But don't try it at home, okay? Okay, for the second sample, I'm gonna do a different technique here. I'm gonna like tap it and not to make it too thick. So now we need to stain it and check what's there. So I actually was expecting a separative discharge. I was expecting this to be pus, but then I did some reading and it can just be mucus. So we're gonna see what's in there. Now we're ready to stain our specimen. Um, I have this right Gimza stain. I bought it on Amazon and it has everything uh, to stain cytology samples. And do not underestimate the power of it because recently I diagnosed my sister with strep throat at home with this kit. So let's do it. I have my special tray, solution number one. My table is not that leveled, <laughs> but that's okay. Now we have to wait three to four minutes. Okay, time to use buffer number two. Honestly, I know it's very DIY, right Gemza method, but I think it's still gonna work. Let's, let's rinse it. This one for six to eight minutes. One more buffer. 
and we're going to be able to look at it under the microscope. Here are samples and I already see that this one is not going to be that great. It's too thick. Whereas this one where we, where we did the stamping, this one should be perfect. Let's take them to the microscope. Let's take our samples to the microscope. This is the camera that's going to help us today. This little guy sits on my microscope and is a super cool tool for projects like this. And if you're interested in learning more about PathoZoom, I'm going to leave a link to a form where you can put your email and either me or the PathoZoom team is going to get in touch with you. So let's check the good one first. And I have to admit I wiped it a little bit, but we still have this good piece of the slide. Okay, so I got so excited that I had to share it with some pathologist's friends. And the PathoZoom has this function that you can share live view from under the microscope with, uh, and you just broadcast it here, and you can either do a link or do a QR code. So uh, I shared the link uh, through WhatsApp with everybody, but everybody's already sleeping, but one friend actually responded. So she was interacting with me on WhatsApp and was looking at my neutrophils from my eye. So, so much joy for a pathologist. <laughs> okay, we're in PathoZoom scan and live view and our sample doesn't look too bad. We're actually, whoa, nice, okay. We need to focus on the screen, but guys, this is beautiful. I'm so excited because, let's see if these are neutrophils, but they sure look like neutrophils to me. <gasps> guys, officially, officially announcing. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I love it. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I had it upside down. I apologize. But let's find a good place. Oh my goodness, guys. This is amazing. This is a beautiful place. Look at this. Like, it's at 2x. Here you can, if you want to measure, you can calibrate different objectives. But look, like from far away, you already see what that is. It's supportive discharge. It is not just mucus, my friends. These are neutrophils. Okay, I'll need to make it lighter. Let's see if I can adjust white balance. Let me correct white balance. Okay. Oh my goodness. My friends, this is amazing. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness. It's full of bacteria of cocci. This is as high as I can go, but look at those neutrophils. <gasps> These are neutrophils. They're so beautiful. Like, they're so obvious. Let me find like a single one so that you can appreciate the nuclei and like full of dots. This is so cool. I am so happy that the universe gave me the opportunity to have my second eye with this church and I can show it to you. This discharge is being produced. But yeah, now seriously, I suspect the dots are all bacteria. And then all these cells, I know for a fact that these are neutrophils. You can appreciate the lobulated nuclei and I'm going to find you a really, really good one. And if I was a clinical pathologist, veterinary clinical pathologist or a cytopathologist, I would have a better, mm, magnifi higher magnification for this. But look at this. It's a bunch of neutrophils with lobulated nuclei. 
And this is what I have today in my eye, but my friends, oh, and here are some other cells. Maybe epithelial? This one looks like it has cytoplasm. Maybe white blood cells? Look at this beautiful neutrophil. This one, I think. Whoa, lobulated nucleus. It's beautiful. When you toggle here, you can even scan this slide or you can use the live view. For now, we're just gonna use the live view. Look at this whole place. This is a lot of neutrophils and some strings of mucus and the dots, I suspect, bacteria. Maybe some precipitation. I'm not sure, they're very homogeneous. But what I am sure of are these neutrophils and some lymphocytes maybe, or other types of white blood cells. So these with round nucleus. Um, okay. Let's just see what the other sample looks like. It's too thick, I already know that. But that's okay, we will give it a try. We will give it a try. A lot of material in one spot. Let's just have a look. Oh, you can see the neutrophils very nicely as well. Look at them. They're beautiful. Oh my goodness. This is 40x. And I do have it right side up. It's just a lot thicker prep. I'm trying to see if we were right about the dots being bacteria. I'm trying to see if there are any of these dots in the neutrophils eaten by them. I'd like to think yes, but actually I would need a higher magnification to make a convincing statement and to be convinced myself as well. Nevertheless, we can confirm the presence of separative conjunctivitis in my right eye and good news is I do have an antibiotic ointment that I put in this eye yesterday so by tomorrow I hope at least the discharge is going to be gone. So that was it. Conjunctivitis clinical and microscopic pictures powered by Pathosome. If you're interested in this little camera, just let me know. There is a form below. You can fill it and either me or somebody from the Pathosome is going to get in touch with you. And I talk to you in the next episode.